Welcome back. Let's look at floating point variables. Floating point basically refers to the decimal points or in other words, it's called the real numbers. So this is, these are some sample examples of floating point variables. So let's get to online GDB. Um, here we have a program similar to int for floating point variable. Uh, the data type is used as float. This is the keyword. And then you can give any variable name here. We have given F and I've initialized it to a number here, which is a real number 3.1234567, right? And to print it percentage F, F, right? Percentage F basically refers to float. Uh, percentage D was integer, percentage F is float. So this is a simple program which takes an input um and it actually prints the output so 3.123457 this is how it prints the output very simple program now we'll make some changes to this program so let's make a small change here 0.2f right this is a format specifier what we are saying is after the decimal point totally two decimals alone should be printed that is 3.12 is what we are looking for here so you would see the output here as 3.12 so it is basically after the decimal point how many should be printed so if i give it as 5.2 right the what it says is totally it should be five spaces occupied right out of which after the decimal point two so what would happen is before the three there would be a space three decimal point one and two so this would these are the four digits that will be printed because after the decimal point, it's going to be two. And then there is a decimal point. There is a whole number. And before that, there is nothing. So there would be a space included there. So if you look at the output here, so there is a space three and point one two. This is how it gets displayed. So let's look at some differences between integer and float. So integer stores whole numbers, whereas float or decimal stores, I mean float stores decimal or real numbers. The size of integer as we have seen is 2 bytes or 4 bytes depending on the compiler. Float is always 4 bytes. In integer we saw that it supports unsigned in integer or unsigned int. Um, but in floating point there is nothing called unsigned float. But actually if you declare it as float you can store both positive and negative numbers. So float f is equal to minus 3.2 is a valid declaration. There is something called short and long in int. Uh, there is nothing called short and long in float. Format specifier used as percentage d for integer and percentage f for float. Uh, we can print a integer in octal and decim hexadecimal format which is percentage o and percentage x. There is no octal and hexadecimal representation for floating point. This is at a pretty high level the difference between an integer and a floating point variable. Let's now look at how a variable a floating point variable is stored in a memory. So this is how a floating point variable is stored in memory by the computer. As you know everything is going to be stored in binary. So there is a four byte totally allocated for the floating point variable. One bit is used for the sign bit. Eight bits are used for the exponent part, which is actually before the decimal point. And 23 bits are used for the significant part, which is actually after the decimal point. So let's take a number here, right? So 10.75 is the number we are talking about. So the sign is zero, um, which indicates that it's a positive number. And then you look at the 10, which is represented here, right? In eight bits, it's represented. And then there is a 23 bit where um, the 75 is being stored here, right? So this is how uh, the number 10.75 uh, is so stored. When it is a negative number, you will see that the sign bit is toggled here. So there is a one here, which indicates that it's a negative number. Coming back to online GDP, you can have a program which has an integer as well as a float as well. So this is an integer, this is a float, right? So it is possible to have an integer and a float. You can display both using the same printf. So I have a percentage D and 5.2 F. I'll actually display the integer and the float value. 
So when you run this program, you will see that the integer and the float, the integer is printed here and the float gets printed here. And uh, you cannot have it like this. This is an error. Um, so this is an error. You cannot have a comma separating them, um, but you can have two different lines for this. So this works. And you can have more than one variable for float as well. Uh, so I have two floating point variables here. So when it's not initialized, it ca carries a garbage value. So after that, you can initialize it later. So in this particular case, what we have done is uh, we have two variables, floating point variables, one is F and one is TT. I'm assigning the value of F to TT. So TT will now have this 3.124567. So when I'm printing it, it displays that value. So this is possible. So if you look at it, you will see that 3.12 here, which is actually the floating point getting printed to two decimal points, right? So accuracy. So this is possible. Now, if I assign an integer or a float to an integer, so let me do this. I'm assigning a floating point value to an integer. Let's see what happens here. So it did work, no problem here, but let's print the value now. Let me actually, um, let me not initialize it here. Let me print the value of this um, integer that we have seen. Let me just print it here. Print F percentage D comma I N. I'll print it here. I'll comment this line and then print it. So I have actually assigned the floating point. You see a value three here. So what has happened is there is this is called an automatic typecast. So there is a floating point value. There is an integer. I am assigning the floating point value of 3.12 to the integer. What the compiler does is integer can hold only the numerical part. It cannot store after the decimals. So what it has done is it has taken that ignored everything here, taken the three, assigned it to IN and that's what has got printed here. So let's get back to the main program that we had earlier. So we saw float in detail here. There is also something called as double. So double actually occupies eight bytes. It also stores decimal numbers. It's just that it is more has higher precision than float. So if at all you're doing a scientific project like a rocket launch program, you want the precision to be very, very accurate. So in those cases, you can use double same percentage F or percentage G can be used and uh, you would not in normal programs, you wouldn't see a difference. Actually, I mean, most of the programs, a double is not really required. A float would be sufficient, but just understand that whenever you need real good precision, you can go for double. And there is also something called long double, which is even more higher precision, right? So these are a couple of other options available as well. But for regular programs, a float would really be sufficient. We don't really need to go for a double or a long double. So we saw double um, integer is two or four bytes, depending on the compiler. Float takes four bytes, double takes eight bytes, long double is 16 bytes, right? So we can check it quickly. Um, the size of is used to look at the size of um, each of these data types. So I've just written a simple program which will give the size of uh, floating point, size of uh, double, size of long double. So when you look at it, size of long double is 16, uh, size of uh, float double is eight, size of int is four, right? You're able to see that here now. It's pretty much the summary of floating point data types that you have seen. So it has float, double and long double. It's used to store the real numbers.